afternoon and welcome to the Q2 FY25 earning conference call of Exide Industries Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal the operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Aditya Jawar from Invested Capital. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you. Good afternoon to you all from Excite Industries. We have with us MD and CEO Mr. Abhik Roy, Director of Finance and CFO Mr. Ashish Kumar Mukherjee. President and Company Secretary Mr. Jitender Kumar, MD and CEO of Excite Energy Mr. Mandar Deo, and Head Investor Relations Mr. Shavi Agarwal. Before we proceed, there is a disclaimer for the call. Few statements by the company management in the call may be forward-looking in nature, and we request you to refer to the disclaimer in the earnings presentation for further detail. We will start the call with a brief opening remark uh, from the management, followed by Q&A session. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Avik Roy for opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Aditya. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to you all to the Excite Earnings Call. Uh, uh, in the beginning, I will talk about the industry dynamics, and later we'll uh, take you through our operational and financial highlights for the quarter, as well as half year. In terms of the industry demand scenario for the businesses that we operate in, it was a, actually a mixed pack. While the automotive replacement demand was strong for both four-wheeler and two-wheeler, the demand from auto OEMs was quite modest in quarter two. On the reserve power segment, both industrial UPS and solar trade markets were seeing steady increase in business. Home UPS market was soft because of uh, you know, early arrival of rains in many parts of the country and uh, overall heavy rain during the quarter. Private and public sector cafes continues to keep order booking healthy in industrial infrastructure sectors such as uh, power, railways, traction, etc. However, as you know, the telecom sector has seen tepid demand due to a very high base effect because last year they had rolled out all those 5G towers which did not happen and that rollout is almost complete this year. And also there is a shift of technology from lead acid batteries to lithium ion uh, batteries. Export demand was robust both in existing as well as new countries. Given this industry landscape during the quarter nearly two-thirds of the business, nearly two-thirds of the business including automotive aftermarket, industrial UPS, solar, industrial uh, infrastructure, they have all grown by strong double-digit uh, numbers. However, the remaining one-third of the business, which comprises of uh, home UPS, automotive OEMs, telecom, they have seen a decline, sharp decline as for the reasons I have stated before. As a result, the overall sales have grown at a modest rate of 4% in the quarter two and 5% uh, in H1. If you look at margins, a gross, gross profit margin in the current quarter increased both on year on year as well as on quarter on quarter basis. Driven by favorable product mix, as you saw, the OEM businesses and telecom businesses, which are low margin businesses, going down and therefore the replacement share was going up. That has resulted in an improvement of uh, gross margin, as well as uh, the, there was a movement in the material late, late prices also in quarter two or quarter one. EBITDA was 11.3% during the quarter versus 11.8% in the same period last year. Largely due to the lower absorption of its overheads because our top line growth in many of the segments were very low. However, for the first half year, we delivered a steady performance with a margin of 11.4% compared to 11.2% in the previous year for the same time period. At XI, we have recently undertaken an organization realignment with a focus on strengthening and consolidating the go-to-market strategy in both B2C and B2B markets. 
I'm happy to inform you this resulted in some top leadership hiring who are being onboarded now. Some announcements we have already made and some more announcements we'll make shortly. This high quality leadership talent will drive the growth agenda in the next years. Moving on to lithium and cell manufacturing project, which is under our subsidiary Excite Energy Solutions Limited. The construction works, including the main cell building, admin building, warehouse, and other support build buildings are closer to completion. Equipment placement and installation work is ongoing at the site. We have also started relocation of the teams to site offices to support project activities. In the current fiscal year, Excite has already invested equity of 550 crores until October. With this, the total equity investment by Excite to date sorry, is... I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Your voice is breaking. So, uh, since when it was breaking? Uh, Last couple of seconds, sir? Again, it's break breaking, sir. <clears throat> yeah, just give me a second. Yeah, sir. <laughs> So I'll repeat once again. Is it better now? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, sir. Go ahead. Thank you. So, let me repeat the last sentence. That equipment placement and installation work in our lithium and factory is ongoing at site. We have also started relocation of teams to site offices to support project activities. In the current fiscal year, Excite has invested 550 crore as equity until October. With this, the total equity investment by Excite to date is 2,852 crores. Going forward, the outlook for the lead asset business remains positive in the near to medium term. We are a diversified player catering to multiple sectors, both in automotive, aftermarket, and automotive OEM, as well as industrial infrastructure, telecom, railways, as well as exports. This gives us a lot of resilience across sectors. And uh, we can also capitalize on the large uh, opportunities that this sector delivers. With this, I close my opening remarks. I'll be happy now to take your questions, please. Over to you. Okay. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone table. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets for asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Vaibhav Justi from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. Just, you know, my first question is on the core business, you know, given that you've seen some moderation in the first half and there are a few segments which in, you know, muted volumes. How should we think about the second half? I mean, you talked about, you know, outlook is positive near to medium term, but given that, you know, the base of last year is also high, uh, can we expect to go back to double digit growth or, you know, could it be a bit lumpy, at least in the near term? And if you could give a broad level uh, outlook on individual segments, that would be really helpful. So, <clears throat> thank you, Baiwa, for your question. Uh, let me give you a little more, more color on our uh, segment level growth. That will actually uh, give you some. Uh, details of uh, our performance. See, in the first half year, our strongest growth segments have been automotive aftermarket, particularly four-wheeler aftermarket, and same in quarter two as well. Solar was very good. It was very strong, almost close to 25 to 30% growth. Industrial UPS trade was almost 14% close to 14 to 15% growth. The infrastructure space other than telecom was also double digit. Exports was also double digit. So that's why I say almost two thirds of our business, around two thirds of our business, they grew by about 14 to 15%. The balance one third, which comes from basically telecom, inverter battery, as well as auto, OEM, that was on the decline. Now, 
there was a reason for each one of them, which is different from each other. Auto OEM, you have read, you must have read, it's in public domain because of the increased channel inventories. There was a cut down of production by almost all OEMs in quarter two. The channel inventories went up to 70-75 days. But the plus side is, positive side is, in October during the festive month, there was an extremely good uh, auto sales, both four-wheeler and two-wheeler. One of the best festival seasons they have reported. Which means the inventory levels have come down to 30-35 days, which is normal for the industry. And uh, the association body, they have also predicted that on a full year, the automotive industry will grow by about 5%. Now, just consider that the first half was zero, and the second, and if the full year is five percent, so obviously the H2 growth will be far stronger than the first half. So, the declining uh, segment of auto OEM is bound to come back in the second half because the industry will also pick up. Now, coming to telecom, I mentioned that telecom had a high base effect because of the 5G rollout last year, right? Slowly that base is getting corrected. Slowly the base is getting corrected and more or less by uh, 5G rollout was over by last year's Q3. Mm. So going forward the base is corrected and we don't see this kind of a decline year on year on telecom. On top of that, we have also started supplying our lithium and uh, battery banks to the telecom tower operators. Though it is done through Excite Energy, but we also have a, you know, quite a substantial market share on the lithium-ion side also. So even if there is a shift of technology from lead to lithium, we will still encash the opportunity through our subsidiary. Now coming to inverter. Inverter, you know, yes, there were early onset of monsoon in Q2. Uh, we suffered, but we have a very strong strategy in place. Now we are additional, additionally augmenting our go-to-market and finding out new channel networks. Uh, quarter three will be not so positive because this is not the season for inverter batteries. But from Q4 onwards, from January onwards, we again see a rebound, and with our uh, enhanced network presence, we'll be able to catch on the opportunities. So, in short, the businesses which declined in the first half year are going to rebound. That is our expectation in the rest of the year, and in the other businesses where we are already growing double digit. We are very strong, and uh, we, we don't see any kind of uh, demand uh, going down in the next half, in the, particularly in the aftermarket and in the industrial infra. Just one additional comment on the industrial infra. If you look at the macros of quarter two, it has been extremely kind of the lagging indicators are a bit uh, disappointing. Uh, most of the economic indicators of quarter two is not good. But we still posted a double-digit growth because of our order backlog. Going forward, if you see, I just uh, came, came across the October uh, results. If I see the leading indicators of uh, October, uh, the Manufacturing Purchase Managers Index, it's showing an increase to 57, 57.5 or something. So I believe, again, the order inflow from infrastructure will increase with uh, increased economic activity in the country. So that's in short to answer your question, Baibar. Does it answer that? Uh, yeah, thank, thanks a lot for the detailed answer. Very, very helpful. Second question is on the lithium ion business. Uh, so, you know, given that we are now a few months, you know, from completion of the plant, given that, you know, SI25 enters the market that you have uh, guided for, uh, at least could you give some idea in like, how many customers have been onboarded so far? Because from your commentary, it looks like you're now focusing on onboarding the larger customers as well. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I understand that you have the NDR, but at least some, you know, broad number and, you know, which segments have, uh, are there? Yeah, by the way, uh, as I have also told in the uh, past quarters, that we will have some limitation in giving out too much of details on the customers because of, obviously, for the NDAs and all. Hmm. But still, I would, uh, with that in mind, I will also hand over to Mandar Dev, who is the Managing Director and CEO for Excite Energy, who is also on the call to give you uh, some insights. Mandar? Yeah, thank you, Avik. Thank you, Vaibhav. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, like uh, Avik said, uh, we have a very significant uh, portion of our customers cover through NDAs, which is not all. 
therefore uh, we cannot go into the details right now however those customers that have put in the public forum uh, you, you've already seen that right so those for example Hyundai we can talk about but others we cannot say right now however mm-hmm. the only thing that I will add is uh, that we are seeing a lot of traction now in terms of volume of take. Hmm. Okay, okay, that's that's great. And I'm assuming that the uh, uh, you know the uh, the start of production will happen sometime around FY25, and then will take uh, you know six to eight months for stabilization, and basically the uh, major damper will happen uh, from FY27. Yes, Mandar. Some insights on the target date of completion? Yeah, certainly happy to do that. So, um, like we have repeatedly said in the past also, uh, you know, our schedule remains unchanged, uh, where we have said that in the middle of 2025, uh, we will have our installation commissioning as well as, um, you know, initial runoff completed. And then in the due course of certification and uh, uh, you know, customer approvals, uh, we should be seeing SOP uh, in 2025. So no change in our originally published schedule. Thank you. Okay. Th- thank you so much. That's very helpful. All the best. Thank you, Vaibhav. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddharth Vera from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so my first question is on the battery pack business. So would it be possible to share any order book numbers uh, for the battery pack business which you have right now? Uh, for the lithium ion, you mean, right? Yes, yes. Sir. Uh, again, I mean, I'll uh, request Mandar to take this question. Yeah, thank you, Abhi. So uh, on the battery pack business, um, again, due to several NDAs, we are not in a position to mention number. Uh, however, all I can say is that uh, uh, given the recent demand, uh, we have seen good utilization and in fact some capacity expansion uh, because of the uh, order board that we see. However, we are not able to uh, say the numbers in the public domain yet. Okay, sir. Uh, got it. So the second question is on the lithium-ion cell business. Now, uh, as we are very close to commissioning within the next few months, uh, uh, how do you think the pricing uh, will be sort of done? Will it be on a cost plus basis or it will be more on a landed cost parity basis? So some thoughts there, how are we looking at pricing in the lithium-ion cell business? Siddharth, our first objective is now to start the production and increase the utilization of the operations. We have committed capital. We have gone far ahead than many people in terms of, uh, you know, progress of the project. The first one is we'll start the production, we'll increase the utilization of the factory and everything else will fall in place. We, we are not theoretically uh, trying to uh, forecast something right now because our whole focus is now on starting the factory and you know developing the pro- products, getting it homologated, uh, getting the entire homologation process complete and start delivering. And of course, you know raw material prices are volatile. Lithium prices, how it will look like after six months or seven months or eight months, not I mean, anybody uh, can tell you. This is also a function of you know, as you know, some kind of uh, underutilization in China, people are dumping prices. So we do not know how sustained this will be. So therefore, we would refrain from a comment which is very, very, for us, it is more of a hypothetical question because right now the whole focus is on absolutely with uh, zero error starting the factory and uh, increasing the utilization, stabilizing it and then increasing the uh, utilization. That remains our focus. Okay, sir, got it. So lastly, yeah. can... Can you talk about the total investment which you will be doing in this lithium-ion cell plant for this year and next year? And yeah. 
and the phase one of sip is awarded by when we think we will be a sort of uplift of the full capacity will come on stream so definitely we'll answer that i'll request mr mukherjee or cfo to take that question for you yes please thanks so the phase one uh, investment is as we said earlier also it will be around 5000 crores that will be complete by next year or uh, you think it will take longer Am I on? Oh no, sorry. The line is not good. Uh, should I reconnect you, sir? Hold on, sir. I will reconnect. Hello. Hello. connected the management line yes sir go ahead okay uh, so uh, starting with your uh, the last question on the investment of in the lithium ion business as i said that phase one investment will be around 5000 crores and large portion of that will be in this fiscal only there may be some spillover to the uh, first quarter of the next financial year but that's as it, uh, what looks at up now Got it, sir. Thanks a lot. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raghunandan from Nuama Research. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity and festive greetings. Uh, sir, firstly, on the uh, lithium business, uh, in terms of cell chemistry, how are you planning your mix of uh, Uh, chemistry between LFP and NC within the phase one of six gigawatt hour, and if you can talk a little bit about how easy or difficult it is to shift capacity from one chemistry to another, uh, the fungibility part, and uh, within lithium, you know, given that you are investing five thousand crore in phase one, another two thousand crore in phase two, uh, your thoughts of getting. Uh, uh private equity or some funding for the lithium business considering the large funding requirements so uh ragu for the first part regarding the cell chemistry and uh, fungibility of capacity i'll request manda to take the question and regarding funding i'll again come back to mr mukherjee or cfo uh, to respond is that okay yes sir thank you what to manda yeah thank you abhi so in terms of the chemistry that we have chosen uh, as we have earlier announced after having a comprehensive analysis of the market for india we have chosen lfp and nmc uh, there is no change in the plan and we see that uh, our approach of having a solid experienced technology partner helping us with both the chemistries is actually resulting in a good confidence of delivering both the chemistries on time as far as the fungibility of the capacity is concerned um we would refrain from answering that in the public forum given uh, it's a Two, two things. One is we are under NDA with several suppliers and technology partners, um, and two, uh, there are different approaches industries can take around this. 
Therefore, we can't answer that in a public forum. Uh, but in terms of LFP and MMC, I expect both the capacities will go online uh, at the stated times earlier. Thank you. Thank you. So regarding the funding, Mr. Mukherjee will give you. Yes, uh, Raghu, thanks for this question. So uh, as I said earlier, the phase one investment will be expected to be around 5,000 crores. And we are quite confident enough of managing uh, this investment. Uh, the large portion of that will come through the equity infusion. The balance, of course, we have to take some bridge loan because uh, uh, we cannot match the outflow uh, uh, immediately. So, and in due course of time, we are also quite confident uh, to repay the bridge loan uh, in future. Uh, got it, sir. Maybe at the future stage, uh, once you reach, uh, uh, you know, uh, once the capacity has been at a more matured level with a higher utilization, would that be the time when you might think about monetizing or getting in some kind of uh, uh, investment partner or a strategic partner there? As I said, Raghu, that we are quite confident enough of managing this investment. And we do not uh, anticipate any uh, such equity uh, partnership as of now. Understood, sir. Very clear. Uh, sir, on the lead asset battery business exports, you've been seeing a strong growth. If you can elaborate a little on uh, uh, the drivers of growth, the segments, and the main regions where you are seeing a good traction. So I'll take this question, Raghu. Uh, see, first of all, one of the major reasons why our exports are showing a very strong growth because historically our vehicular exports, automotive exports were at a very low base. We never actually took it very seriously once upon a time. We were supplying, but it was not a part of our core strategy. So since that was at a low base, uh, therefore, the growth potential right now uh, is uh, very strong. Uh, we are also coming out with some new portfolios for for uh, new markets. We have diversified our portfolio beyond what we were supplying so far. Uh, those portfolios are also premium category, and uh, those are also targeted at uh, the developed world. And uh, all the homologations and trials are in process, and that will be a major growth driver going forward in the short term, maybe in one, two quarters, which is incremental in nature. We also have substantial industrial exports, uh, which is going on well. There were some hiccups because of the geopolitical situation in Europe, because Europe is, a, is a, quite a big market for us. But uh, we have to live with the geopolitical uncertainties. Uh, there are some economic downturn in countries like uh, Germany and France. I'm sure they predict that by end of winter, which means uh, around springtime next year, those economies, uh, those, those demands are also going to come back further. So these are our export strategies, new products, new markets, not uh, too much of a uh, complicated thing. We have identified those markets and we have developed those products for those markets and we are now homologating and carrying out the trials for them. Yeah, that's our export strategy. Uh, got it. Uh, thanks for the comprehensive answer. Uh, just one last question to Mr. Mukherjee. Sir, was there any one-off in other expenses because Q1, Q2, other expenses have grown at 17% and 11%, uh, which is much higher than the revenue growth? Uh, just trying to understand any one-offs there. Just to answer your question, the other expenditure has gone up, but it is primarily as a percentage of revenue it has gone up because of the uh, lower top line growth of under absorption of the fixed cost. There is some, uh, there is nothing particular in particular, but uh, because of the under absorption, primarily as a percentage of revenue, it has gone up. Got it, sir. Thank you very much. I'll fall back in the queue. Thank you.
A reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask question. The next question is from the line of Sonal Gupta from HSBC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so just to wanted to understand just on that same point of other expenses, uh, I mean, like uh, in absolute terms also, it's up 30 crores quarter on quarter and year on year, it's up almost 50, 55 crores or something, 56 crores. So could you just explain a little bit more on what's happening here? So they said that uh, uh, other expenditure, there is nothing in particular, one few elements have gone up. It is not like that. There is some increase and uh, primarily because of the normal inflationary factor in certain expenses have gone up. But as a percentage, it is higher compared to the previous year, primarily because lower top line growth as a result of which the, uh, it has caused a lower absorption of fixed cost. Got it. And overall, in terms of the uh, profitability, I mean, like you've, uh, I mean, I, I think one of the objectives has been to improve the profitability of this uh, dead asset business. So, I mean, what do you think are the main drivers for that and how long will it take for you to get that? It is, uh, you know, uh, if you look at the profitability, it is, uh, uh, we are at the level of this quarter, we are at 11.3%. Uh, of course, we do not give any guidance on the uh, margin in future. But just to give you a feel that our immediate objective is to get around 13%. And obviously, uh, at a longer horizon, we'll look at around 14%. Sure. So, so no, what I was trying to understand is how do you get to that 13, right? Like, I mean, like what would drive it? Is it, uh, are you looking at some cost cutting program? Are you looking at some greater efficiencies coming because of certain uh, process changes or whatever? Uh, I mean, like, like you're mentioning in your opening remarks, you're making more investments um, in personnel as well. So just trying to understand what will drive it, right? Like, So just a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, uh, I mentioned in the last uh, call also that uh, we had undertaken a comprehensive cost excellence project for over two years. And uh, this was done in a very structured manner. That project is almost coming to an end. And the large part of the savings which will be accrued are supposed to be in the back end because a lot of changes in, uh, you know, uh, on uh, reduction of increasing efficiency, reduction of factory rejections, and all those kind of things. So that is a major driver that that should uh, we should get benefit out of that. Uh, secondly, as you were saying, that we are constantly working towards our mix. And uh, going forward, since the trade market uh, or aftermarket looks very very robust, and uh, just to give you a feel, for example, motorcycle OEM business. The demand, it grew by last three years. It grew by 10 percent, 10 percent, and I'm talking about the OEM uh, production figures. 10 percent, 10 percent in the first six months, it grew by 16 percent. So these are all the things uh, which gives us confidence of a huge rebound after uh, 18 months on the replacement side. So similarly, if you look at uh, the top three. Uh, automobile manufacturers, four-wheelers. Everybody has committed uh, their capex for uh, IC engines as well in, on top of top of uh, electric vehicles. For the top manufacturer of the country, he is, they have announced that they are increasing the uh, capacity by almost 80%, 1.8x. Out of that, 60% will be IC engines. So 60% of 80, which means about 25% will be clear capacity expansion in lead acid business. And this is the top manufacturer saying. So these are the things which actually is encouraging us to, you know, re-bottleneck our capacity, sweat our assets, and make some additional investments on the lead acid side to encash on the opportunity because the aftermarket will only go up as a ratio. Uh, so this is one, mix plays a role. 
Secondly, we are also focusing on some profitable exports, as I mentioned in the previous question, which will also improve our uh, utilization as well as also give us uh, penetration into high margin markets with high margin products. So there are multiple levers. Cost excellence is just one part of it, but also mix and go to market plays a major role. And this gives us a feeling that uh, we will be able to drive the margins up through better mix, better cost efficiencies, and of course, uh, premium product. Got it, sir. Sir, just last question. Um, have we taken any price hikes in Q1 or uh, for the lead prices or in Q2? There are two parts. One is the aftermarket. In aftermarket, in quarter two, we have taken uh, price hikes in two tranches. So to, in two tranches, we have taken uh, price hikes, uh, and cumulatively it will be about 1.5%. I can always share with you. Uh, so on the uh, OEM and industrial side, these are mostly passed through. So these prices are indexed with the customers uh, through LME or HZL or any kind of uh, standards. So it goes up and down based on, the, on a particular formula. But for the trade market, yes, we have taken corrections. Sure, sir. Great. Thank you so much for answering me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pramod Amte from Incurred Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So the first question is with regard to can you elaborate the reorganization effort which you have taken? Which are the segments you are trying to revive Can you uh, so that we can look forward to build the same? So uh, all I can tell you is that, uh, as I said, we are uh, realigning the B2C businesses of the uh, company and the B2B businesses of the company together in two parts. And uh, therefore, there are uh, leadership hirings. We have uh, hired uh, some of the best talents to drive the agenda in both B2C group and the B2B group. And there will be uh, international group. So, uh, which is exports. So this is how we have reorganized. This will give us a lot of, uh, I would say, a lot of uh, power uh, in go-to-market. Sir, is it to revive the distribution or strengthen the distribution or the, uh, how do these uh, leaderships will help you to, in, in what angle it will help you? Because this is not on the product side, right? No, no, this is also on the go-to-market side. Okay. This is to make sure that there is a clear strategy uh, so that the the size of the wallet of the network doesn't get melt, melted. You know, there is no melt off because multiple guys going to the same person and, you know, taking a share of wallet within the company. So it's a comprehensive strategy. I won't be able to give you more details than this. But uh, basically on the go-to-market side, we are strengthening the network. Okay, thanks. And when you expect this to start yielding results, uh, is it early part of FI26? You will shortly hear the announcements, uh, maybe within two weeks or within a month, you will hear the rest of the announcements. Some announcements we have made, uh, but we are onboarding the, the leadership. So we'll make, these are all, this will be all informed officially to the, to the exchange. And when do you expect them to start yielding results, early part of FY26 or later part, if you can that's, that's That's basically the expectation that uh, once they're onboarded, two, three months, quarter four, will in any case have some kind of uh, seasonal push from the demand side. Sure. And by quarter one, uh, they will be fully uh, on the job. Because this is also the time period when we plan for the next year, right? Sure. So they will be part of that management team. Okay. And the second question is with regard to lithium ion. Uh, want to check what is the, uh, in the sense of, since you are almost entering the production stage middle of next year, uh, what is the, uh, when you expect a BIS approvals to come through one second, at what stage your labs are in terms of approving local component uh, supplies or the chemical supplies so that you can get into the next path of localization and the cost control? Uh, I have to uh, pass this to Mandar once again, sure. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Abhik. So uh, in terms of uh, the lab readiness question, 
yeah. uh, either for localization or for other purposes. Uh, the labs are running in parallel to the Giga factory. So, like uh, Aida mentioned in the opening statement, um, the buildings are completed, equipment is moving in, the lab progress is in line. So, labs will be ready along with the Giga factory. Now, as far as the BIS certification, and not just BIS, other required customer certifications, we have a comprehensive timeline that aligns because there are requirements of what the equipment state has to be before right. we can apply for certification. And some customers more stringent, some customers equal to BIS. So uh, in terms of comprehensive plan, we plan to finish all of those, typically from the industry experience in the same as you have seen globally. So uh, our lithium ion certifications will be in timeline, will be in line with what the global certification timelines are, which generally range anywhere. Again, this is a vague answer because certification requirements are different, right. but uh, we don't see that uh, we will take more time or less time. It will be in line with what global industry standards are. Sure. And in terms of vendor approvals for chemicals and all, any update? Yeah. Uh, so once again, we are, uh, we have a very robust approval mechanism for any supplier approval, right? So we have a partner that is helping us with that before our labs come in. And once our labs come in, typically those also take, uh, depending on what the component and the supplier capability is, those also take variable amounts of time. Once again, I don't we don't see any reason why we should take longer or shorter than what typically a chemical supplier needs to get approved in a lithium ion cell. Sure. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Lakshmi Narayan from Tunga Investments. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, you had mentioned that uh, you had put an A of close to 2,800 crore in your joint venture. Uh, this, and you also mentioned that you will invest up to 5,000 crores. Uh, is it the same, the same thing which you like to do in the phase one? So this is the phase one. So the phase one, the, in the expected investment is around 5,000 crores. Okay, and by when the phase one will get, uh, um, so when it will start commercialized? So this is just what uh, Mr. Mandar Dev said, that uh, commercial is means we'll, we'll be in the middle of the uh, next year, we'll start the production and we'll take time to stabilize and complete homologation. So in FY25 end, we should be able to commercialize it. And uh, this is for the first uh, phase one, six gigawatt hour. And uh, what about phase two? Uh, how much, you, what, is the, what is an outlay that is planned? Okay, Ms. Mukherjee. So phase two, of course, uh, we'll take a call in due course of time, depending on the market situation and of course demand scenario. And uh, now it is, as of now, it is two elements on phase two. Of course, phase two investment outlay is expected to be lower because we have we're already investing in a common facility as well as land, etc. So it is expected to be lower, but uh, we have to uh, we'll decide on the due course of time. And, and what kind of project IRR you actually expect at phase one? It is, I think, uh, situation is uh, now uh, little volatile with the lithium prices uh, extremely volatile and also on the lower side. So I think it is too early to comment on that. Our first outlook is to complete the project as well as uh, go through the successful stabilization process and uh, then we can have a feel on this. Uh, so just one more question. Uh, what is, uh, you know, do we intend to play, take a part in this grid energy storage system uh, as, if there is an organization? So, Mandar, would you like to take this question? Yeah, absolutely. So, as far as our lithium-ion cell product plan is concerned, we 
have selected product portfolio that will serve both mobility as well as energy storage market segment of course with different products so we will be serving both the stationary as well as mobile uh, lithium ion consumers yeah product so some of the cells will be common for both that is how we are developing okay thank you thank you the next question is from the line of aditya jawa from investec please go ahead yeah uh, thank you for the opportunity my first question is to manda um i understand manda that you have signed nda for your lithium ion project but if you can qualitatively throw some light on what kind of business when we have seen so far number one for example out of the first you know fifty gigawatt how much of the capacity are you seeing commitment from and uh, what kind of customers are we seeing uh, in terms of you know percentage of customers going for only cells percentage of customer going for the battery pack and are we also seeing engagement from oems on hybrid uh, hybrid cars yeah yeah thank you aditya um Avigda, I'll take a first cut. I think is that okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's for you. Yeah. Okay. So as far as the um, mix of uh, pack versus cell is concerned, uh, Avigda, what we have experienced is that there is a good mix of customers that would like only to focus on their product and leave. the complete battery pack with us and also there are others who are fairly evolved in terms of their pack design pack manufacturing who would like to focus only on getting a cell from us so if you look at our original plan business plan that we put out in the public domain the cell and battery pack uh product mix remains pretty much unchanged now as far as the you are right the ndas are there therefore we can't go much into the detail however qualitatively what i can say is that across different target market segments we have seen now like i said earlier a fairly good traction as we get closer to our sop and as customers dp engage with us and look at our factory look at our preparedness uh, we have seen a lot more heightened deeper engagement from our customers in terms of capacity uh, evacuation so while i am not at the liberty to talk about names and percent evacuation all i can say is that we are really uh, Energized by the heightened interest by OEMs across the segments, Aditya. Yeah. So does it also include hybrid cars? All right. So in terms of hybrid, uh, the right now the current technology uh, sort of takes us into the EV segment. The EV is not in our current product portfolio. Okay. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Now, you know the next question, Manda, is on you know uh, profitability. Uh, I mean, I understand it's too early, but we are very close to commercialization, and you would have already entered into agreement with multiple customers, whether two wheeler, three wheeler, or four wheelers. So, what is the line of sight of you know break even, and what you know capacity, you know, uh, in terms of gigawatt hour and utilization, do you think that we will be able to do break even? and one of the competitors you know commented uh, uh you know uh, double digit profitability uh, you know uh, target in in the near term so what is what is your overall thought process on profitability yeah so in terms of break even capacity profitability um irr obviously we are right now focused very um methodically and laser like on making the factory run stabilize improve yield uh, therefore 
right now the organization is focused on that however all i could say is that when we look at the global industry benchmarks both in terms of capacity break even as well as other financial measures such as roes uh, we will be in line with what we see in the market uh, if you look at the industry trends we don't fundamentally see any reason to be uh, different from where the industry on lithium ion cell side is right now aditya Sure. Uh, uh, just I thought, uh, uh, may I request Mr. Mukherjee, do you have any additional points to what Mandar said? Yeah. So, Aditya, uh, uh, as uh, Mandar said, uh, our uh, primary focus is now on the completion of the project and stabilization of the product. And uh, then, of course, once we do that, then we'll have a better feel. But you know, Aditya, that across the globe there is a wide variation in the margin profile of the business. In some players are extremely good, and certain now uh, uh, other players' uh, numbers are on the lower side. But what we feel that uh, going forward, we should look at a margin of um, uh, similar to lead acid, which is kind of mid teens. That's uh, what we expect. when we reach the uh, full capacity utilization okay that's a thank you sir my you know final question uh, is on the lead acid business uh, what the, you know what is the pricing difference between the recycled lead uh, and you know the lead and the spot market and what has been the trend in this you know spread uh, over the last couple of quarters so are you expecting you know it to change in near future see aditya uh, lead price you know is extremely volatile and uh, lme is of course uh, it's as of now it's likely on the lower side but there is no constant uh, you know um, uh, delta kind of thing between pure lead and recycled lead as we are saying that sometimes the pure lead i mean the lme prices are pretty low but the local market prices on the recycled lead is on the higher side so there is no uh, as such a constant uh, delta kind of thing of course in general uh, the recycled lead is uh, lower than pure lead but again uh, it all depends on the situation but as you as you know we have we are playing this game for many many years now i mean this is our bread and butter if finally what we have seen is that it evens out over a slightly longer period of time uh, with lags it even south so sure. thank you that's it from my side thank you the next question is from the line of momaksh mandresha from anandati institutional equities please go ahead yeah uh, thank you so much for the opportunity uh, sir uh, just want to understand on the uh, industrial side the uh, bss uh, battery energy storage system uh, any order traction there uh, in that segment sir any order wins there also and also just want to understand how is that industry shaping up in india what kind of size uh, say would be now when next 2 3 years what could it be sir so let me give you just uh, some color on the how the industry might shape up <laughs> see with the government announcements that you see on solar and other renewables the capacities that they are planning to put up uh, till 2030 which the government has announced and a lot of steps have been taken towards that also they are they, it is obviously going to lead to huge amount of intermittency on the grid the transmission grid will be under pressure as is to take that intermittency of the renewable load therefore the only technical solution at this moment is battery storage to you know make the grid more resilient also you have to see at a very high voltage level the point of generation of renewable and the point of consumption will be far away from each other in india is such a large country and obviously we will put up the plants uh, in some states but the main load centers will be in some other states which will be likely to have longer distances so the transmission grid is even susceptible to more uh, inefficiency so if that is the big driver 
if the solar uh, targets of the government has to be successful then battery storage is a no brainer there has to be large storage systems installed both at the point of generation as well as on the point of consumption so having said that what portfolio we are developing as, a, as you said there has to be some kind of synergy between uh, automotive uh, batteries and storage batteries because we have to have the benefit of scale also so as mandar mentioned that some of the cells which we have developed will be used both for uh, for the ev packs as well as for the ess this is uh, this is something which we are going to get ready with now there is always a question at the regulator level or at the government level on viability gap funding how does the economics look like sorry i'm sorry to interrupt sir your voice is not clear your voice is breaking sir uh i think it was Hello. fine sir you can go ahead sir it was fine sir okay so uh, what was i say uh, as i said the only question and only driver for the market to pick up is the economics that will this increase the tariff and if yes then who is going to fund the gap so it's more this bss business will be largely in the regulated environment of power so therefore lot of policies need to happen to support the real growth and i think it should happen because otherwise the renewable policies will not be implementable so that's on the market side uh, mandar would you like to add anything more on this yeah just maybe uh, one or two technical points uh, like uh, uh, abit mentioned uh, our product portfolio um, benefits from the scale between the automotive and energy storage so some of our cells are uh, fairly close to each other and they benefit therefore we think that uh, we will have a really good product lineup for battery energy storage solution uh, number 1 and number two um, i think given that um, in some of the segments where we already like i mentioned we already have a good foothold through lithium mine i think we see that as a, an extension of uh, that business so um, you know both scale as well as the uh, connect with the potential customer is already on our side thank you yeah and it is bss business finally you know for all government tenders the prime bidder the lead bidder is always a system integrator or the epc or this kind of uh, uh, corporations who are not essentially battery manufacturers they are system uh, integrator solution providers we would like to stick uh, to manufacturing so we are on the left side of the value chain and obviously these lead bidders will be our customers this will also help us to mitigate our uh, risk exposure to regulated environment if that helps yeah and just generally sir how would be the uh, competitive intensity uh, in this segment versus like in auto uh, uh, how uh, do you see that uh, sir uh, because in uh, uh, renewable energy side there will be multiple customers much more number of customers would be much larger so how do you see that competitive intensity in this space sir Uh, what i feel is that uh, there will be few players with large capabilities in the 